In a few weeks, this willow will be full of pollen and buzzing with queen bumblebees. My name is Megan. I live in northern British Columbia, Canada, and I am worried about the decline of the bumblebees. Bumblebees are important pollinators and are key to maintaining biodiversity in the environment. A few years ago, bees covered the dandelions and clover. Now we see very few. Then, my neighbor discovered the bee tree, a very early willow covered in pollen and bumblebees. Snow was still on the ground in shade areas. Since bumblebees and native plants evolved together, I use protein levels found in those food sources as baseline needs for bumblebees. I believe protein levels in early spring when the queens emerge and August when the new queens mate will show the highest percentage of protein available. Since introduced plants come from similar environments, I believe they will have similar protein content to the native plants. I collected pollen from 25 plants from May to October, but in the end only 23 were usable. I only took pollen from plants that were plentiful in my area so I wasn't disturbing the bees foraging habits. To prepare pollen for the protein assay, each was ground with aluminum dust and sodium hydroxide, refrigerated, boiled, and centrifuged. A protein standard was established using bovine serum albumin because a pollen standard was not available. A standard curve was plotted on a graph. Dye reagent was added to pollen aliquot and run through the spectrophotometer. Each pollen test was run in triplicate. Average absorbance levels were plotted on the standard curve graph to determine the concentration. A simple formula was used to find the relative protein content. My results showed that native plants have the highest level of protein when the queens emerge from hibernation and rise again when the new queens mate. Introduced plants were higher in mid-season. I learned it's essential to keep the early spring native plants, especially local willows, for bumblebee survival.